हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंसिस एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई आई टी गुवाहाटी एंड इन द कोर्स मोलिकुलर बायोलॉजी वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डिफरेंट आस्पेक्ट्स रिलेटेड टू मोलिकुलर बायोलॉजी एंड वेयर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द सेलुलर स्ट्रक्चर्स वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द प्रो करियाटिक स्ट्रक्चर एंड एज वेल एज द यू करियाटिक स्ट्रक्चर्स फॉलोइंग दैट वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ बायो मॉलिक्यूल्स सो वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द न्यूक्लिक एसिड्स वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द प्रोटीन्स एंड वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द एनजाइम्स वाइल वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द न्यूक्लिक एसिड वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ डी एन ए वी हैव डिस्कस डिस्कस्ड अबाउट हाउ यू कैन बी एबल टू आइसोलेट द डी एन ए फ्रॉम द यू कैरियाटिक एंड एज वेल एज द प्रो कैरियाटिक सेल एंड हाउ यू कैन बी एबल टू uh sequence the, uh, the the dna and other kinds of related uh, informations uh while we were discussing about the rna we have discussed about the isolation of rna so we have discussed about the different methods of uh, rna isolations following that we have also discussed about the central dogma of molecular biology where we have discussed about how the multiple processes are related to each other and that's how they are actually been responsible for uh, governing the different events what is happening within the cell now uh, following that we have also discussed about the replications and in the current module we are discussing about the transcriptions so let's start discussing about this particular important aspects related to central dogma of molecular biology now as far as as far as the central dogma of molecular biology is concerned it is actually a uh, a regulated event where you have the multiple processes linked to each other and they are being responsible for production of the proteins and you know that the production of protein or the enzyme is been responsible for the phenotypic features what are going to be exhibited by the cell in the previous lecture we have discussed about the uh, the uh, the transcription uh, in the prokaryotes so we have discussed about the transcriptional units we have discussed about what is the structure of the uh, transcriptional unit in the prokaryotic system and so on so as far as the transcriptional unit is concerned the uh, the the transcriptional unit is in the in the prokaryotes is the polycystronic whereas in the case of the eukaryotes it is actually the monocystronics so uh, and a, every transcriptional unit is actually having the composition of that it going to have the promoter it's going to have the coding sequence and it's going to have the terminations and all these uh, transcriptional units are been present on to the dna which is responsible for production of or the synthesis of the ribosomal rna trna and as well as the messenger rna right uh, you know uh, that the ribosomal rna is responsible for the formation of the ribosome and that's how they are actually going to be directly be involved into the protein synthesis whereas the transfer rna is actually going to be transfer the amino acid you know that the protein is made up of of the different types of amino acids then messenger rna is actually been responsible for the decoding the genetic information present on dna right so the these three rna molecules are going to be produced from the dna by a process which is called as transcription right and uh, in the previous lecture we discussed about the transcription in uh, prokaryotes so we have discussed about the different types of events we have discussed about the initiation elongation and terminations now as soon as uh, we will talk about the transcription in eukaryotes the transcription in the eukaryote is going to be more complex because the transcription because the eukaryotic system there is a significant difference between the transcription in prokaryotes versus transcription in eukaryotes one of the major difference is that in the in the case of prokaryotes the the rna polymerase what it is actually going to utilized for for the synthesis of the rna from the dna is 
single or the same type. Whereas, in the case of the eukaryotes, it is going to be different for the different types of cells, right. Because, uh, the second point is that the transcription in the bacteria or in the prokaryotic system is going to occur in the cytoplasm, whereas in the case of the eukaryotes, it is actually going to occur inside the, uh, cyto uh, inside the nucleus. So, that is why the transcription is going to occur inside the nucleus, then it is actually going the, the transcripts what is going to be formed, it is going to be transported out of the nucleus and that is how it is actually going to be utilized for the translation. So, uh, as soon as the transcription in uh, eukaryote is concerned, right, the transcription as I said you know the in the case of prokaryotes, it is only utilizes the single type of RNA polymerase which has been an attached to the sigma factor and that is how it is actually going to make an hollow enzyme uh, and that hollow enzyme is actually going to be utilized for the transcription of the different types of genes. Whereas, in the case of eukaryotes, you are going to have the different types of RNA polymerase. So, RNA polymerase is the enzyme which is responsible for the transcription. The RNA polymerase of the mitochondria and the chloroplast are similar like bacteria because you know that the mitochondria and chloroplast are the prokaryotic in origin, right. All eukaryotic RNA polymerase are multi subunit proteins which contains three different type there are which, which uh, there are three different types of RNA polymerase which is responsible for the transcription in the eukaryotes. You have the RNA polymerase 1, you have the RNA polymerase 2 and you have RNA polymerase 3. Now, RNA polymerase 1 is being utilized for the synthesis of the ribosomal RNA and uh, it is sensitive, it is resistance to the aminantine uh, treatment, right. So, it is not going to get affected and it mostly been found inside the nuclei, okay. So, within the nucleus you have a region which is called as nuclei, right. Then uh, as far as the RNA polymerase 2 is concerned, RNA polymerase 2 is being utilized for the synthesis of the messenger RNA, messenger RNA of the different genes, right. Uh, it is sensitive or the it is very sensitive for the amenantine treatment or the uh, and it is being found into the nucleoplasm. Right? So, it is not it is going to be present within the nucleus. Then we have the RNA polymerase 3, RNA polymerase 3 is required for the synthesis of the tRNA and it is intermediate between the uh, between the RNA pol 1 and RNA pol 2 in terms of the sensitivity to the amenantine. So, it is sensitive but it is not that sensitive to the RNA pol 2, but it is less sensitive than, uh, so it is less sensitive than the RNA pol 2 and uh, RNA pol 1 is anyway not sensitive at all. And uh, the RNA pol 3 is also being found within the nucleoplasm. So, these are the three different types of RNA polymerases, RNA pol 1, RNA pol 2 and RNA polymerase 3. Now, Let us talk about the eukaryotic promoters, right. So, each promoter contains some specific situants which get recognized by the transcription factor. Eukaryotic promoter has a longer region than the prokaryotic promoter because it contains all those sequences which are important regarding to initiation. It includes the core promoter elements at which the RNA polymerase get attached and form the initiation complex and also for the efficient transcription it requires an upstream promoter elements which are basically being G plus region and at which the transcription factors are bind. So, uh, just like the prokaryotic system in the eukaryotic system also you are going to have the initiation, uh, you are going to have for after that you are going to have the elongation and after that you are actually going to have the termination. And in the initiation, the promoter is actually a region which is outside the coding region, uh, but within the transcriptional unit is actually going to provide the docking site for the transcription factors. So, these are the some of the 
important event or important difference between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic system. Remember that in the, in the, in the prokaryotic system the promoter was allowing the binding of the sigma factor whereas in this case you are actually going to have the binding of the different types of transcription factor. And uh, although we are not covering the signal transduction in this particular course, but uh, if you go through with any of the signaling uh, event right for example, if the insulin is binding to the insulin receptor it is actually governing or it is actually activating the, uh, the important transcription factors. Then these transcription factors when they go and bind to their respective promoters that is how they are actually going to recruit the RNA pol 2 for the synthesis of uh, that particular gene and the gene product. And uh, that is how the, they are actually going to have the required enzyme and the required protein into the cytosol and that is how these are actually going to be responsible for the reduction in the glucose level. Uh, same is true for other kinds of transcription, other kinds of events. For example, if we are getting the infection, for example, there will be a COVID infection, right? Then the cells are actually going to have the different types of signaling uh, uh, cascades and that is how it is actually going to activate the different set of transcription factors and these transcription factor will go and bind to the different set of uh, genes, uh, the promoters of those genes and that is how they are actually going to have the different types of protein products and these protein products are going to be secreted out of the cell and these are mostly being called as cytokines and these cytokines are actually going to fight with the different types of infectious organisms. Uh, same is true for the antibodies also right when there will be a clonal propagation then there will be a activation of the transcription factors and so on. So, transcription factor actually do play a very crucial role because they decide which promoter they are actually going to bind. Once the transcription factor goes and binds to the promoter then the promoter is committed for the transcription because you have started and you have in you have uh, committed this particular promoter for the transcription. So, it is actually you have started the initiation and once the initiation done then the RNA polymerase will have no option but to sit on this and start the transcription right. So, this is being facilitated mostly by the transcription factor that you are actually going to have the transcription factor for the stress responses, you have the transcription factors for the lowering the glucose level and so on. So, uh, the set uh, the battery of transcription factor going to decide which promoter or the promoters are going to be uh, labeled for the transcriptional activity. And once the promoter is uh, the RNA polymerase is going to sit right mostly the RNA pol 2 is going to sit it is actually going to enter into the elongation phase then you are going to have the multiple uh, cascade of reactions and that is how it is actually going to attach the nucleotides and that is how the elongation will go and then it is actually going to enter into the termination. So, termination events are more or less the same as what we have discussed in the prokaryotic system as far as the mechanistic issues are concerned it is going to have the uh, intrinsic uh, termination or the row dependent terminations. So, uh, these are the theme, some of the events what we are going to discuss now. So, once the initiation is done then you are actually going to have, so uh, during the initiation, during the initiation we are going to have a cascade of events so that the transcription factor will go and bind and then ultimate aim of the initiation when the initiation is going to happen that the RNA polymerase 2 will come and bind to the promoter. And I am always saying RNA pol 2 because RNA pol 2 is actually been responsible for the synthesis of the messenger RNA. And we are mostly having the genome with the different types of genes where the, uh, the gene product is going to be synthesized. So, mostly it is actually the RNA pol 2 which is going to be transcriptionally very active. RNA pol 1 and 3 are only going to be utilized for the synthesis of tRNA or the ribosomal RNA. So, their activity is going to be not that much compared to the RNA pol 2. So, the initiation, so it in transcriptional initiation by the RNA pol 2 
Eukaryotic messenger RNA transcription required the initiation complex which consists of the journal transcription factors and the mediators. So, you are, these are the some of the transcription factors which are actually going to be present onto or which are actually going to have the active role into the initiation. So, what we have is the first is this right transcription factor 2 D or it is also been called uh, or it, it, cons it is uh, been consist of the Tata binding proteins as well as the TBP associated factors or Tata binding uh, protein associated factors. What the function of these uh, TF2, uh, TF2D is that it is actually going to recognize to the core promoter or the Tata box and it also going to recognize the core promoter which is non Tata box. So, it is going to recognize the Tata box and it is going to recognize the other transcriptional other, other sequences within the promoter. Then we have the TF2 uh, transcription factor 2A. So, it is actually going to stabilize the transcription uh, the TBP and the transcription um, associated factors binding. Then we have the TF2D. So, it is going to help in RNA pol 2 and TF2F recruitment and also helps in the start site selections. So, these are this is very important actually. So, this is the second factor then you are going to have the third factor then the fourth factor then you have the TF2E. So, it helps to RNA pol in the promoter binding. Then we have the TF2E. So, TF2E helps in the TF2H recruitment modulation of the TF2H and helicase activity, ATPase activity and the kinase activity. And then the last is the TF2H. So, TF2H is going to help in the promoter melting with the helicase activity and the promoter clearance by the phosphorylation activity. So, you will understand once we are going to discuss how the these transcription factor general transcription factors are going to be uh, play a role in terms of initiating the initiation. So, these initiation is a very uh, you know is a sequential uh, steps okay and sequential in uh, manner these transcription factor will come and bind to the promoter site and that is how they are actually going to recruit the RNA pol 2 and once the RNA pol 2 is been recruited then the transcription is going to be started. So, transcription initiation these transcription factors are sequentially going to bind to the Tata box DNA to form a pre initiation complex. At last when the TF2 H get bind it phosphorylate the RNA polymerase to initiate the transcription in the presence of ATP. So, you have this is the promoter right. So, you have the Tata box and you have the uh, other region in the Tata box right. So, the first transcription factor what is going to bind is the D, so TF2 D right. It will go and bind then it is actually going to uh, the uh, help or it is actually going to provide the docking site for the TF2 A to bind. So, the first is this is going to bind the second the TF2 A is going to bind and then that once these two are actually going to bind then it is actually going to allow the binding of the TF2 B. And, uh, and then followed by TF2 F, E and H. As soon as the TF2 E is actually going to provide the docking of the binding of the TF2 H and you know that the TF2 H is actually going to have the helicase activity and it is also going to have the kinase activity. So, it is actually going to bind or it is going to allow the binding of the RNA polymerase and it is actually going to phosphorylate the RNA pol 2 right. You know that the DNA is negatively charged right. So, it is going to be negatively sorry sorry it is going to be negatively charged right. So, when the RNA polymerase is bind RNA polymerase is binding because RNA polymerase is recruiting or is binding to this particular region because of the positively charged uh, interactions. So, there will be a positive charge onto the RNA pol 2 and that is how they are actually interacting with each other. Now, what will happen is once the TF2 H is going to be present what it is actually going to do is it is actually going to convert these positive charges by the phosphorylation. You know that if, if I have a A protein and if I add the 
uh, you know phosphorylation right. So, imagine that if A is a positive charge right, so, if it is a positively charged protein right that is how it is binding to the DNA. So, that is how it is binding to a DNA. So, this is not A, but this is RNA pol 2 and uh, because this is positive and DNA is negatively charged right. Uh, but once I will actually going to have the TF 2 H right, TF 2 H is actually going to have the kinase activity, it is actually going to phosphorylate. So, what will happen is that it is actually going to generate this right and that is our that is actually it is going to impart the negative charge right. So, if it is imparting the negative charge then it is actually not going to destroy the affinity of the RNA pol 2 to the uh, DNA, but it will actually going to allow the RNA polymerase to move up because it is initially it is binding and it is not moving because the interaction is very strong. Now, it has broken those interactions so that it actually can slide over this particular uh, molecule right because the sliding of the RNA polymerase is very important and that is how this is the function of the TF2H which is actually going to have the helicase activity. So, it is going to break open the uh, DNA and on the other hand it also going to have the phosphorylation activity so that it will be phosphorylate the RNA polymerase. So, you can imagine that it is going to sit on the DNA and then it is going to slide along the DNA molecule and that is how it is actually going to start synthesizing the RNA molecule. So, it is going to start synthesizing the messenger RNA. So, this is once the initiation at the initiation the RNA uh, all this happens then it will enter into the second phase that is the elongation. So, elongation is uh, very simple as like uh, what we have discussed in the case of the prokaryotic system where the it is actually going to read the template and then depending upon the Watson Crick base pairing requirements the A if it is A then it is going to put the T into the uh, sorry U into the RNA uh, into the RNA if it is G then it is going to provide the C remember that, that there is no T present in the uh, into the RNA structure. So, if it is A then it is going to provide the U if it is G it is going to provide the C. So, this is actually going to be DNA. Uh, in and this is going to be RNA right so that we have any discuss also right. If it is C then it is going to provide the G and so these are these are going to be depending upon the Watson uh, Watson Crick base pairing rule and uh, so on right. So, if uh, that is that is a way it is actually going to keep adding and that is how the elongation will be keep happening. So, from the 5 prime end it is going to start and then it is going to end on to the 3 prime end. Once the elongation is done then it, the, uh, it will reach to a stage where it has to stop the synthesis and that is how it is really going to enter into the third phase that is called as the trans, uh, terminations. So, uh, transcriptional terminations, so transcriptional terminations would be different in the case of the RNA pol 1 genes or RNA pol 2 genes and the RNA pol 3 genes. So, uh, RNA pol 2 transcription uh, genes may continue to the hundreds or even thousands of nucleotide beyond the end of a coding sequence. Then the cleavage of the RNA strands occur by a complex which appear to be associated with the polymerase. Cleavage of RNA is coupled with the termination process in occur at the same consensus sequence. The polyadenylation of the mature pol 2 messenger RNA occur at the 3 prime end which results in the poly A tail. This process is followed by the cleavage and termination. Both process polyadenylation and termination occur at the both same consensus sequences and both of these processes are interdependent. So, termination is also been uh, governed by the multiple factors and for different types of RNA polymerase you are going to have the different types of ter terminations. For example, for the RNA pol 1 you are going to have the row dependent terminations whereas, for the RNA pol 2 where you are going to have the more complex terminations that uh, RNA pol 2 termination generally coupled with the RNA processing event in which the 3 prime end of the transcript undergoes the cleavage and for the annihilation. Whereas, in the case of RNA pol 3 it is actually going to be the row independent termination. Now, the transcription termination, so you can have the poly A uh, dependent termination. So, this type of terminations are basically coupled with the 
RNA maturation process in which the 3 prime end of the nascent RNA undergoes body annihilation and cleavage and uses the 3 prime end processing reaction as carried out in two steps. So, transcription of a poly A followed by the cleavage or nascent and then the upstream product is poly annihilated and downstream product is degraded. Basically, the 3 prime starts when the cis acting element in the poly A site of the nascent RNA transcript is recognized by the binding factors. When these factors bind at 3 prime, it forms a strong complex which result in a high shear force consequently processing down which cause the disruption of RNA pol 2 and DNA RNF. So, this is what exactly going to happen when there will be a uh, transcription in terminations. So, this is going to be a poly A dependent uh, terminations. Uh, so, this is all about the transcription in the prokaryotic and as well as the eukaryotic system. So, what we have discussed that from the DNA you are going to have the production of the ribosomal RNA, you are going to have the production of tRNA and you are also going to have the synthesis of the messenger RNA from in the case of prokaryotic system it is going to be the single uh, RNA polymerase which is going to be perform these transcriptional activity with the help of the different types of sigma factors whereas in the case of the eukaryotic system it is going to be the different types of RNA polymerase which are going to be utilized. So, you are going to have the RNA POL1, POL2 and POL3 and all of these are actually going to go through with a very complex process of the transcriptional initiation where you are going to have the different types of the transcription factors and these transcription factors are going to be recruited onto the uh, promoter site in a sequential manner and that is how they are actually going to form the pre-initiation complex and once the pre-initiation complex is going to be formed then it is going to allow the RNA pol 2 to enter into the elongation phase and once the elongation phase is over then it is actually going to uh, enter into the termination phase and the termination is also different for the RNA pol 1 and pol 2 and pol 3 and they are actually going to have the different types of factors which are going to be utilized for the terminations and once the termination is over they are actually going to have the uh, RNA transcripts and these RNA transcripts are further going to be utilized for the protein production or the other kinds of reactions like for example, in the case of RNA polymerase uh, as a, uh, ribosomal RNA or tRNA they are going to be uh, going to be processed for the uh, synthesis for the attachment of the amino acids and other kinds of events whereas in the case of messenger RNA it is actually going to be utilized for providing the information into the system so that it is actually going to be utilized for the synthesis of proteins. So, with this uh, brief discussion about the transcription in the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic system uh, I would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss more aspects related to transcription. Thank you.